Welcome everybody, this is going to be a quick video on how to set up a SPA application with your ASP.NET Core minimal API. I've made previous videos on how to do the setup and publish it in a Docker container and to the cloud. Those videos are not outdated. I will leave them in the description. It just so happens that using minimal APIs changes things just a little bit. So. Today, I'm going to cover two specific things that you might want to think about, which is your SPA configuration and your backend configuration. Think of this video as an extension on the previous three videos regarding SPAs that I made. So links to those in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. We have a fresh minimal API solution, no dependencies and only a program CS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, open up a terminal. I'm going to run npm init view at latest. This is going to produce me a, a latest Vue.js application. I'm going to call it client. And really what I'm doing is I'm following the si same setup as I did in the previous videos. Uh, let's go ahead and see the into client. We're going to be law abiding citizens and just follow the instructions that we were given. There we go. Let's go ahead and run npm run dev. And one thing I'm going to say is potentially this could crash for you because uh, so white is your development server. So while you're developing your spa application, there is a server that you don't see, which is kind of like your ASP.NET Core server, which renders your application and does hot module replacement. So a node colon URL is a relatively newish Node.js version feature, like version 16 or whatever. Uh, if you have uh, cannot resolve module dependency regarding this step, update your Node.js modules. I had to do this before recording this video. Otherwise, install an older template. So let's go ahead and make sure that it works. Here we have our application loads up and renders. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead, drop this down. And again, we'll just follow the same steps we did from the other tutorials. We're going to look for spa services. We're going to look for extensions and we're going to add that to our minimal API. And there we have it. If we go into minimal API, we have spa services extensions. And just as I explained in the previous videos, what you want to do is you want to add your use spa middleware. And again, the setup is pretty much the same, although we're going to jump over some hurdles in a minute. We're going to place a body here and we're going to use proxy to spa development server. And we're just going to put a URL in here, right? So let's go ahead, take this URL, place it here. And there we go. Our ASP.NET Core app is ready to go. Let's go ahead, open up another terminal, .NET run. Our application starts up and uh, it's, it's working, right? So do we have hot module replacement? If we refresh, we are going to see this 50, uh, 501, 101 port, which is WebSockets, which is basically your hot module replacement, which is what the development server is going to pump a hot module replacement into your browser, right? So if I go ahead and type in something like hello world here and save and there it is, right? So very quick, even better since I remember it, but this is your experience. So what do we talk about here? What, what's different with minimal APIs? Well, if uh, we go to program CS, I have an endpoint here, which is on slash API. Take this URL, place it over here, and we're going to go to slash API. It is still giving us our Vue.js application and no API call. What if we take use spa and place it before map get. Does that change anything? So app finished reloading, we'll refresh and nothing happened. So order really doesn't matter here. Uh, what matters? What are we looking for? And really to solve this initial problem, you really need to understand middleware. Other than map gets, you are not seeing any middleware here. You the map get that you see here is an I endpoints route builder extension. If you've been using previous versions, it's going to look similar to use endpoints, okay? Where you get I endpoint route builder. Since the app builder has the I endpoints route builder, uh, it's kind of like returned from within that function, but basically build 
as the middleware and if you're using writer or resharper you can decompile sources and you can take a look at what is in here so we got we're adding some services again we're configuring some services uh, configuring configuring so that ends here and then we create a new web application and we add some more services if we scroll down a little bit we see configure application configure application I think is called somewhere around here so yeah I can see by these green green little bars because I, hi I highlight this name and it shows me where else in this file is highlighted if I take a look at this it's when web application builder is instantiated and, and the constructor is internal okay but when it's created this is the pipeline or the building process that it goes through but nevertheless configure application is your middleware and this is where we see app use developer exception and app use routing where which it adds by default some custom middleware it tries to add or use endpoints and then we got some other stuff here but uh, the moral of the story is is that it's still using uh, use routing and use endpoints so let's go ahead and just restore order to our middleware okay uh, we'll use endpoints same way that it does it there discarding and empty lambda so we're not configuring anything if we take a look at our application it is going to explode and if you are patient and you read the error I'll just say you gotta use routing my dude uh, you're gonna come back here and you're gonna say use routing okay semicolon and then there you have it there is your application we go to slash api we still get the spa js application guess what because we placed use endpoints after use spa so let's go ahead and reorder it real quick and there we have it yeah if we now go to slash api we have hello world from api and otherwise we get our spa application uh, the next problem you might run into is you might have something like this and you're right back at the spa application again this is basic understanding of middleware where you're saying okay uh, I'm at my use endpoints let's go ahead and add a little bit of our custom middleware here so the constructor here will be context and next delegate so this will be like ctx and there we go and here we can say context we get the request and uh, the path and if it starts with segment so we can say okay if we're starting with an API and we've managed to get here, we're trying to grab an endpoint that isn't there. So we can just go ahead and say that task is complete. So we're basically short circuiting. We're not going further. If we want to go further, we call next. Otherwise here we're saying we're finished and context uh, for the response status code, we just say 404. Whatever you were looking for, isn't found let's go ahead and put a semicolon here put it in another file create your own middleware extension you know do your do your due diligence on keeping your code clean this should hopefully restart and it does let's come back here so now if we try to reach this we have a 404 if we try to reach this we have the api if we try to reach this we have our application now uh, before I actually started talking about uh, the API there is an issue that I should have covered that I've seen happen before but looks like it's been fixed here is the hot module replacement for the local host so this issue isn't happening here because it's working right so it's just gone ahead and changed the host and IP that it's pointing to, right so if I refresh here uh, this will point to this address and it will basically connect to that normally and this one connects to this one uh, so that's perfect uh, what used to happen before is the host and port that uh, the application was hosted on that propagated to the ASP.NET Core application so it would try to connect to the previous server so you basically you don't have synchronization between the development server and the ASP.NET Core server so how do you configure this what do you need to do well you basically need to know who built your development server is it webpack is it some rollup or rollup is a built tool is it byte or beat as it's pronounced i don't want to have a new to come get me so we are using Vite, and Vite has configuration webpack has configuration 
Uh, most of these development servers will have some sort of configuration. They will have build configurations. The point is there's configuration. You want to look for that configuration. Uh, so you might be tempted to go to, for example, Vue.js. And here you want to look for something like API or reference or configuration again, because Vue.js isn't specifically responsible for running the dev server. Uh, you're not going to find this information here. So you will need to look for your uh, build tool or your running tool, which may be Webpack, maybe be Vite. Uh, so Vite, you look for a guide. If you don't see things that say something like configuration or something like that, you look here, references, API configuration, that sort of thing. We go to config. Uh, we try to look for tables of contents. Is something here? Nope, is something here server options right build tool development server you look for server options quick list what do we got here hmr if you're american you're gonna feel right at home if you're not american americans love acronyms so hmr is hot module replacement you go ahead click this and you're capable of configuring where your hot module replacement is targeting so let's go ahead and look at how we can change this right so in here we have resolve and alias and here it says server.hmr so you you be brave and bold i know this may not necessarily so easily translate without having any code samples here to basically say okay i actually need to go to this configuration put server and hmr in here and this will work but try this uh, some of the documentation is not the best around these sort of components but you just gotta try sometimes so yeah you have your server hmr what options do we have here we have host and port so let's go ahead and try to specify this something like this and the port we got port here and what one two three four right so an a non-existent one uh i will open up um uh, that looks like a nasty error you can take a look at that in a bit but here's our application right so come around here it's trying to connect to something non-existent so if you need to configure your hot module replacement you can do that for this i think this error might be the fact that it's struggling with the hot module replacement so after fixing that let's go ahead and give this a refresh to make sure that it's none of our applications that are causing this right so, and yeah, pretty much uh, there we go. So two main things that I wanted to point out, how to basically reconfigure uh, SPA services extensions with ASP.NET Core minimal APIs. The rest of the SPA uh, application configuration and productionization, you can get that from the previous videos. And finally, for your SPA configurations, check the documentation, whatever dev uh, server you have, it may be pointing to different URLs. You want to align it and make sure that it's pointing to your ASP.NET Core application. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions around SPA services, extensions package, there is no documentation for it, right? Because Microsoft is all in on Blazor. They hate JavaScript. They don't get paid because it's JavaScript. So you don't get docs for that. So if you have any questions regarding this package, do leave it in the comments. So people who do stumble upon this video can resolve their issues. If you want the source code for this video and some of my other videos, come support me on Patreon. A big thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. You helped me make these videos. Thank you and goodbye.